Okay, now one of the one of the requirements of doing this is. Uh, If you're going to do Arlo, you got to do Arlo. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this is what we do. This, this is an honor. I don't feel like him. I don't think. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna do this and uh, get a little special introduction here. So here we go. couple of special reasons for doing this song tonight and reasons that this song is very special. The first is it's in honor of my family because we've sat around the Thanksgiving Eve table and sang this song many, many years now. And also, doing this song for a very, very special friend and it's dedicated to him because every Thanksgiving now for several years, you ever have one of those friends that can walk through a pasture field that's got all kinds of uh, those kind of piles in them and you're walking with your friend and your friend will tell you things that lighten the whole thing up and can find humor in it. Well, I've got one of those friends and that friend's going through a very rough time. And that friend, every year, as soon as the Thanksgiving or the Halloween pumpkins are put up, we start sending me pictures of signs and chains across the dump saying closed on Thanksgiving. He's having a bad time right now, but he's doing it in good humor. So I'm dedicating this version of Alice tonight to him and for years to come. And I know that where he is right now, he's managed to make it through so far. He's in hospice. But he wanted to make it long enough to hear this, and so he has. And it's in honor of him. So for Carol Bell, this is, this is for you from now on. But I'm also doing a song because it's a Thanksgiving song, and I don't get to do the song very often. Once a year. It's a phenomenal song. It's a phenomenal, light-hearted song. And for a phenomenal, light-hearted song, we're going to celebrate it. And it goes like this. The name of this song is Alice's Restaurant. It's about Alice and the restaurant. But Alice doesn't live in the restaurant. It's just the name of the song. That's why I call the song Alice's Restaurant. Oh, you're a sweetheart. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. What ride is it? It's round the back. Just out a mile from the railroad track. You can get anything you want. And I was his restaurant. And I all started two years ago, that was two years ago on Thanksgiving, when my friend and I went up to visit Alice at the restaurant. But Alice doesn't live in the restaurant. She lives in the church in the Bell Tower near the restaurant with her husband, Ray, and Boston the dog. Living in the Bell Tower at the church like that, they got a lot of room downstairs where the pews used to be. And being as how they got all that room, seeing as how they took out all the pews, they decided they didn't have to take out their garbage for a long time. Yeah, we went up and found the garbage, and we thought it'd be a friendly gesture for us to go down and take the garbage down to the city dump, and that's what we did. We got in the back of a red VW microbus, took shovels and rakes and implements of destruction, and headed on toward the city dump. But when we got there, there was a sign and a chain across the dump saying closed on Thanksgiving, and we'd never heard of a dump closed on Thanksgiving before. So with tears in our eyes, we went off into the sunset looking for another place to put the garbage. We didn't find one. Till he came to a side road, and off of the side of the side road was another 15-foot cliff, and at the bottom of the cliff was another pile of garbage. And we figured one big pile is better than two little piles, so rather than bring that one up, we decided to throw ours down. 
that's what we did. Went back to the church, had a Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beaten, went to sleep, didn't get up until the next morning when we got a phone call from Officer Opie. Said, kid, found your name on an envelope at the bottom of a half a ton of garbage and just wanted to know if you knew anything about it. And I said, yes, sir, Officer Opie, I cannot tell a lie. I put that envelope under that garbage. talked for about 45 minutes and we finally came to the truth of the matter and the truth of the matter was is that we had to go down and pick up the garbage and we also had to go down and talk to him at the police officer station. Now friends there was only one or two possibilities that could have happened and the first was is that he could have bought us out and told us never to be seen to the garbage around the vicinity again which wasn't very likely. Well, wasn't what we expected. It could have been the metal on us and said, we're being so brave and honest over the telephone. That wasn't very likely and we didn't expect it. But friends, when we got to the police officer station, there was a third possibility we hadn't even counted upon. We was both immediately arrested and cuffed. And I said, oh, we, I don't think I can pick up the garbage with these handcuffs on. He said, shut up, kid. Get in the back of the patrol car, and that's what we did. Got in the back of the patrol car and drove to the, quote, scene of the crime, unquote. Let me tell you about where it happened here. It was Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Ain't got the three spot signs, three police cars, and two police officers. But when we got to the scene of the crime, there were five police cars and three police officers, and this was the biggest crime of the last 50 years, and everybody wanted to get in a newspaper story about it up all kinds of cop equipment they had hanging around the police officer station there. They was taking tire track prints, dog smelling prints. They took pictures of the approach, get away the northwest corner, the south north corner, the south northeast corner, and that's not to mention the aerial photography. And they took 27 8 by 10 colored glossy photographs with circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. Well, we got through that ordeal. Once we did, we found out that the truth of the matter was we had to go back to the jail and we went back to the jail and Oh, he said, kid, I'm going to put you in a cell. I want your wallet in your belt. I said, well, Obi, I can understand you want my wallet because I ain't got no money to spend in the cell there, but what do you want my belt for? He said, kid, we don't want no hangings. I said, Obi, did you think I was going to hang myself for litter? And he said he was just making sure he friends Obi was because he took out the toilet seat so I couldn't hit myself over the head and ground. And he took the toilet paper out so I couldn't bend the bars, roll the toilet paper down the window, slide down the road, and have me an escape. Said he was just making sure, friends, he was, and it was about four or five hours later that I was. Remember, I was song about Alice. Alice came down. A few nasty words to hold me on the side, held us out of jail. We went back to the church, had another Thanksgiving dinner. They couldn't be beaten, went to sleep, and didn't get up until the next morning when we all had to go to court. Walked in and sat down, and Obi came in with the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy photographs and circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. He sat down. Man came in and said, All right. So we all stood up, and Obi stood up with the 27 8 by 10 color glossy photographs with circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. And then Obi looked at the scene. Uh, the judge came in and sat down, and the judge had a seeing eye dog. And Obi looked at that seeing eye dog, and he Looked down at the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy photographs with circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one, and he looked at me. Then he looked at the CNI dog. And then he looked down once more at the 
twenty seven eight by ten covered glossy photographs of circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us and friends, oh we began to cry. Because he came to the realization that this was a typical case of American blind justice and there wasn't nothing he could do about it and the judge wasn't going to look at the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy photographs with circles and errors and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. We had to pay $50 and pick up the garbage and snuck it. But that's not what I came to tell you about. Came to talk about the draft board. They got a building down in New York City on Whitehall Street where you walk in, you get injected, inspected, detected, neglected, and selected. So I walked in and sat down. I got good and drunk the night before, so I looked and felt my very best that morning. I mean, because I wanted to be like the all-American kid. I wanted to be like the all-American kid from New York City. I mean, I, I wanted to feel like the all-American kid from New York City. And there I was. I sat down. I was hung down, front down, hung up in all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly things. And man came in, had a piece of paper in his hands. He said, go see the psychiatrist room 604. And that's what I did. Went out to room 604 and I walked into the shrink and I said, Shrink, I want to kill. I mean, I want to join the army and kill. I, I mean, I, I want to kill. I want to see. Blood, gore, guts, and veins in my teeth and eat dead, burnt bodies. I mean, kill, kill. Kill, and I started jumping up and down, and I was yelling, kill, 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 and he started jumping up and down with me, and we spoke, you know, and kill, kill. Sergeant walked over, pinned the metal on me, and took me down the hall and said, you're our boy. And I went through all the procedures down the hallways and so forth, and I was going through all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly things, and they was injecting, inspecting, detecting I, every single part of me, and they was leaving no part untouched. I finally walked in and I came to the very last man. Walked in and I said, what you want? He said, kid, we ain't got but one question. You ever been arrested? So I proceeded to tell him the story of the Alice's Restaurant Anti-Massacre Movement for Orchestration and other phenomena and five-part harmony. He stopped me right there and he said, kid, did you ever go to court? So I proceeded to tell him about the 27 8 by 10 color glossy photographs of circles and errors and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us and that in full orchestration of the phenomenon. He stopped me right there again. He said, Kid, I want you to go over and sit down on that bench that says Group W. So I walked over to the bench there group W events where they put you if you may not be moral enough to join the army after committing your special crime. There was all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly looking people sitting on the beds there next to me. They were some mother ravers. There was father stabbers. There were father ravers. There was father ravers sitting there next to me and they was taking that mean and nasty and ugly and all kinds of stuff and the meanest, ugliest, nastiest one, the meanest father raper of them all was coming over to me and he was mean and nasty and ugly. He leaned over at me and he said, what'd you get? I said, I didn't get nothing. I had to pay $50 to pick up the guards. He said, what were you arrested for? And I said, there. And they all moved away from me on the bench there and they was tearing all kinds of hair off, all conversations about me and talking about all kinds of stuff and until I said and create the nuisance. Then they all came back and shook my hand. We had a great time talking about crime, stuff, father stabbing, mother raping, all kinds of things we were talking about on the desk there. Then this man came in, he had a piece of paper in his hand. He 
held a piece of paper up and he said, kids, this piece of paper's got 47 words, 37 sentences, 58 words, we want no details of the crime unknown, the rest of the officers need me to think I'll say potato about the crime unknown. He talked for 45 minutes. Nobody understood a word that he said, but we had fun filling out the forms and playing with the pencils there on the desk. And everything was fine, and I was filling out my form. When I turned it over, there, there on the other side, away from everything else on the other side, in the middle of the other side, in parentheses, capital letters, quotated, read the following words. Kid, have you rehabilitated yourself? And I walked over to, to the sergeant. I said, Sergeant, you know, you got a lot of damn gall to ask me if I got, I mean, I mean, here I am sitting on the group W bench. Does he want to know if I'm moral enough to join the army, burn women, kids, houses, and villages after being a litter bug? He said, kid, we don't like your kind. We're going to send your fingerprints off to Washington, and friends, somewhere in Washington, enshrined in some little folder, is a study in black and white of my fingertips. The only reason I'm singing you the song now is because you may know somebody in a similar situation. And if you're in a similar situation like that, you got to walk into the street where you are. Walk in and just say, Shree, you can get anything you want at Alice's Red to Mom and walk out. You know, if one person did that, they'd probably think you was really sick and they wouldn't take you. In harmony, they probably think this both mentally deranged, and they wouldn't take them either. And if three people did it, can you imagine three people a day walking in, singing a bar, Alice's restaurant, and walking out? They'd think it was an organization. And can you imagine fifty people a day, friends? I said fifty people a day walking in, singing a bar, Alice's restaurant, and walking out. And friends, they would think it's a movement, and that's what it is. The Alice's Restaurant Anti-Massacre Movement, and all you got to do to join is to sing with it the next time it comes around on the guitar. With feeling. We're waiting on it to come around on the guitar is what we're doing. Here's your chance. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. stop wars and stuff like that you gotta sing loud I've been singing this song now for over 20 minutes I ain't proud or tired well what we're gonna do is we're gonna join together the next time it comes around on the guitar and we're gonna join the Alice's Restaurant Anti-Massacre Movement and you will be official members and you can build your own group of your bench. Put it right there on the front porch for all your neighbors in America to see. So when it comes around on the guitar, we're gonna do it one more time. And here's your chance to sing it loud. Here we go. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Alice's Restaurant, one more, you can get anything you want, at Alice's Restaurant, accepting Alice, you can get anything you want, at Alice's Restaurant, walk right in, it's round the back, just 
just half a mile from the railroad track. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Ba -da 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 -da. At Alice's Restaurant. Thank you. Oh my goodness. That's one of those songs that you feel so good afterwards to go. Oh. Uh, thank you all very much. And, and thank you all for being a part of a new tradition. We're going to do it again next year, so just be wise for us. Oh, thank you so much. You are. I appreciate you guys very much. Helping me get my grandma through college. You're awesome. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much.